Congressman Daryl Issa is leading the fight and funding for the military vaccine mandate. He joins us now. Good morning, Congressman. How are you doing? Good morning. And uh, it is deja vu all over again, even though yesterday was Groundhog Day or the day before. Uh, we are still trying to keep them from discharging these distinguished veterans uh, when we, in fact, have over 98 heading toward 99 percent successful vaccinations of the military, much higher than any other part of our country. And yet we're forcing out veterans, uh, as you know, some of whom were previously given religious exceptions. Now they're being denied them. Uh, you know, it's amazing. You can give them an exemption for smallpox, but not give them one uh, for something which has now devolved into uh, closer to the flu, as you know, uh, the current variants. Uh, these vaccines don't work particularly well. And on top of it, this, uh, this is a much less lethal strain. And yet we are still throwing uh, very distinguished individuals, even chaplains are being thrown out rather than, than their religious views being honored. So then in, in your world, if I, I'm understanding it, if you don't like the policy, one of the ways to defeat it is to defund it. I mean, is, this, is, that, is that the avenue you're uh, approaching here? Right. We, we typically call them no funds amendments. If you say no funds may be used to discharge personnel over not having the COVID uh, vaccine, uh, then it would limit them. But just yesterday, I discovered that this isn't just going on in the military. This purge is going on in some of the most amazing places. The NSA is in the process of getting rid of over a thousand of our cyber specialists. These are people who work alone in rooms with computers. Uh, because they asked for and were denied uh, these same religious exemptions. Uh, it, it's, it's the strangest thing. It's, uh, in a, in a, a godless government, uh, the one religion seems to be uh, mask mandates and COVID shots. <laughs> well, that's an interesting uh, perspective. All right, for those who are just joining us, and uh, I know I've asked you this question before, and I apologize for repeating myself, but give us an idea specifically what a religious exemption looks like. In a nutshell, if you either have a religion against having these kinds of things put in your body, or you have religious objections to, for example, how they were made, uh, if a aborted human fetus was used to produce the vaccine or to develop it, and that, from a religious standpoint, you cannot participate in, in that, that, uh, that death of, of an unborn child, that would be an example of, of a reason. And that reason has, and in the past, been accepted uh, for other people who, quite frankly, would love to take the vaccine, but they won't do it because of how it was produced. And that's that's an example. Uh, as you know, Seven Day Advents, Adventist and others, there are a number of other reasons. Uh, you know, if, if you were an observant Jew, I'm pretty sure you wouldn't take something made with pork swine. Uh, there are just things that, uh, but you know, you understand in order for these religious exemptions to be honored, they have to be evaluated by clergy and found to be both sincere in their beliefs and consistent with a mainstream stream religious belief. So we're not talking about just anything you make up. You're talking about people of faith who are citing something that has been cited before and granted before being denied. Uh, but let's go beyond that. One of the reasons that I've offered this amendment is we have succeeded. We have gotten 99% of our people vaccinated uh, in the military. That's far greater than the population as a whole. And you, at some point you have to look and say, if it was going to work or if it has worked, we've got enough. Uh, the idea that, that the last fraction of 1%, the last few thousand have to be vaccinated um, is, is sort of like saying you can't accept a conscientious objector as a, as a uh, medic because he might not be willing to pick up a gun and yet he's willing to go into battle and, and serve his country. We have, and that's one of the reasons that historically we've had medics who, and, and doctors, people who have been willing to serve, but for religious reasons said they wouldn't pick up a gun. This is part of our constitution. It's part of what the First Amendment stands for. And this accommodation is reasonable. Uh, 
it, it's it, and it's a, and it's an amazing one because no no and I repeat no not a single accommodation has been made other than we found three Marines who were already leaving the service that they said well we're not going to kick them out if they're leaving in the next 90 days to me that's not an accommodation for religious reasons that's that's simply not wanting to shoot somebody uh, you know as they're firing on themselves so we are right now in a situation in which the constitution is being challenged by this administration and right now the constitution is losing first let's just if i can get try to squeeze in two quick questions here uh congressman first of all your, your critics will say hey listen if you join the military you have to get 31 different vaccinations what's one more your your quick response to that would be people have been granted these uh these accommodations and remained on active duty in the past no reason they shouldn't be able to in the future, period. And then lastly, it seems like the military is becoming more and more political and more and more liberal in their politics. Is that just, is, is that perception or reality, sir? It's perception. Here's the reality. In the military, and I served in the military for 10 years, when you're given an order, you, you might say, are you sure, sir? And when they say, yes, I am, you salute and you obey the order. Our men and women uh, in the command structure are obeying orders they don't believe in. I've seen the evaluation of people who all the way up the chain of command until it got to headquarters, they were saying, yes, he should get the accommodation. And then when it got to headquarters medical, they said no. The fact is, this is from the top down. This is the president of the United States and his secretary of defense saying, we will not give an inch on this mandate, end of subject. And they don't worry about the fact that the science no longer supports that the current vaccine is worth throwing people out who are part of the fabric of our military. Demoralizing the military as we did in Afghanistan and now demoralizing them by throwing out some of the, the best soldiers that, that we can find, including our Navy SEALs, makes no sense. On that note, we'll call it a conversation, sir. Congressman Darrell Issa, thank you for making time for KUSI once again.